right, Ken. Right. Your first question is, can you remember your first Arsenal game at Ivory? Of course I can. Um, the thing about it is that I consider, my mum always tells me she used to take me to games before, um, before, before she actually let me go me home. Yeah. And she was telling me that there were like, she used to take me games that Alan Sun was playing. I actually quite remember that. It was 1979. Yeah. And I remember going like, do you remember the football combination? Yeah. Games. Yeah. Um, yeah. Where, On the Saturday um, where the first you, team were away. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. And one guy, one of my next door neighbour, we just lost, Dave Ed. Right. He used to be friends with like Raphael Mead. Right. And he, he, used to, he kind of used to take us to games as well. But the first game I remember, because I had to take my brother, who was 10 years, who was um, just turned 11. Um, sorry, actually turned 11. And my next one neighbour, Wayne, who was nine. So I basically was in charge. And when I was giving them about 50, 10 quid. So basically £2.50 each. And it was 17th December 1984. Wow. Where we, where basically it was a game against Watford. The late Tommy Caton yeah. was um, in the back line with David O'Leary. Kenny Sampson was um, playing. Also, we had um, in midfield, we had Stuart Robson. You know, like I said, who was fleeted in, a, in about the captaincy when I, uh, when I first died. Tony yeah. Adams wasn't playing. He yeah. wasn't even thought of. He, I know he had the odd game that season uh, against Man United in the run of the life games, but it was Watford. It was one all. Ian Allison had a penalty. Tony Copeland saved it. Ian Allison put the re- rebound in. We were about five minutes ago, Les Taylor, um, <laughs> E-class for Watford. So right. that, that, was, that was a bit of a damp squid. I wasn't too happy with that. But, <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Kenny, who was, who but, was your favourite player back then? At the time, if, if you talk about between... Um, um, night, when I first started getting into Arsenal, it was obviously it, was, um, it started to be Liam Brady because Liam Brady. when I first was an Arsenal fan, I thought Arsenal was an Irish club. Yeah. Because <laughs> when I... In 19, um, when I first um, got to be aware of Arsenal, nearly 41 years ago, we had seven Irish internationals. We had, you know, Jennings in goal, John Devine, it was probably a reserve. We had the, like, the guys from the Republic, O'Leary, Brady, and Stapleton. We had the guys from the Northern Ireland, um, Rice, Jennings, and, um, and Nelson. Nelson, Nelson yeah. So, yeah, so that, and that, that came, made, made it kind of an Irish club. So Liam Bates was the first player that I, I, I kind of fell in love with. And then, Obviously, um, I, had a, I had a soft spot for Huggy White, Chris Huggy White, yeah. who actually yeah. still lives in, um, lives in um, North London. He lives around um, um, the sort of the like said, Ali Pally area. Because I still, so I haven't seen him for a couple of years, but he's still, he's still um, a bit local. So it was Chris Huggy White. But I ain't going to lie, when Chiny Nicholas joined us in um, 983, he became my favourite player. Because uh, when he left Celtic, he scored 62 goals. And I yeah. thought that he's going to replicate when he came to Arsenal. If he could do half that, it would be and unbelievable. Yeah. 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 But I think with Charlie Nicholas, Charlie Nicholas, what I didn't realise that Charlie Nicholas didn't like playing with his back to goal. Yeah. And he was actually a more creative player than a, uh, a centre forward. So, really and truly, it was um, only when um, we got Tony Woodcock and, and Paul Mariner that we kind of saw the best of Charlie Nicholas on a consistent basis. I think Terry Nill kind of wanted Charlie to do things that he wasn't capable of when he bought yeah. anything. Yeah. I mean, the best happened I mean, was an 83-2 semi-finals where we both lost it to Man United. So yeah, to Man U, yeah. It was, a situation, it was a situation where there was a lot of impatience. You know, we were, you know, like 81 we came third, then we probably we came fifth in 1982, um, then 83 was a disaster. And I think that's the beginning and end of the Terry Nil. And I think, you know, all the old people and then over state went to the Town Hall to ask for Terry to be removed, and I yeah. think it was it was very reluctant. Uh, um, that, sorry, Peter Hill to make the decision because he didn't want to sack him. Yeah. It's factual that it was actually David Dean who proposed that um, Terry should be um, removed for his job because at that time David um, Dean was becoming the majority shareholder, and he's the only one who can make a decision. And I think that's when. That was kind of when our renaissance started, when David Dean had more of an input. Yeah, more and I power. Think, more power, yeah. More power. And I think that's it. And it's a shame because people look at the Terry Neal days and Don Al days and they look at the fact that, you know, we weren't playing great football. But remember, they got some good players. Remember, we got Paul Mariner. Who, yep. Paul Mariner was probably Don Al. But remember, 
Tony, we've got Tony Woodcock, Perry Tino, got a very good player in Tony Woodcock. And he left with Charlie Nichols as well. Yeah. So like, Terry did some good things for the club, but it's only afterwards that when you look at the what George Graham inherited in 1986, that was all started during the you know, Don Howe, Terry Neal era. Remember, it was Don Howe who gave David Rowcastle his debut. Yeah. And Don Howe and Terry Neal who brought Tony Adams back into the side. So they, they're worth foundations. And let's not forget that Terry Neal brought the best left back in the world at the time, which is Kenny. Yeah. God bless. Hopefully, he's in Austin. Fingers now crossed, he gets, yeah, he gets, yeah, he gets, makes yeah. a speedy recovery, yeah. Yeah. So, an effort. And remember, you've got, you know, Huggy White had his chance. You know, Paul Davis, another one of your boys from South London. Yeah. He was like, prom- he was very prominent. Um, so, it was one of those sort of guys that were coming through. And I know, like, Mickey, Mickey Thomas and Rowcastle, it was, it wasn't, it was Terry Neal and Don Al, we were actually game in the head. Obviously, Pat Rice, who's, who came back from Watford to be the coaches. So, yeah. You didn't see the, the fruits of Terry Neal's labour, but it's only after he's gone that we, I think Arsenal fans should you know, appreciate what he did for the yeah. club. Yeah. I, th- I, think, I think the thing about Arsene Wenger as a manager, you've got to realise that Arsene Wenger is very much a throwback to the managers that they had at Liverpool. Like Johnny Barnes and, um, and Graham Sunes always talk about the situations that when you went to Liverpool in the 80s and 70s, their, their, their motto is, we didn't buy you to teach you how to play football. You know yeah. how to play football. So when there's any situations in the field, you work out yourself. We know what's going on. But hang on here. I'm Roy Evans. I'm Ronnie Moraine. I'm Bob Paisley. I'm not, as, I was, I'm not as good as Johnny Barnes. I'm not as good as Terry McDermott. I'm not as good as Kenny Daglish. I'm not as good as Graham Sunez. Or, you know, or you and Phil Neal. Yeah. You guys are the best players in the league. You learn your... You work out yourself. And Arsene's very much that kind of manager where he believes that a player should work out themselves. Like, remember Arsene's always big best quote ever, and it's legendary actually. You can always tell a person's personality on the football field. So if you look at so the reason why that, I'm making that point is because when Arsene came to the site, came to the team, he had some fantastic ideas from Europe. Yeah. You know, he had the French market to himself, French market to himself. Yeah. So what's happened is that he brought he brought these ideas with him. Obviously, Glenn Hoddle can vouch for that as well. Yeah. You know, like he brought the warm downs, you know, like he brought stretching down the, the creatine, stretching the creatine, you know, didn't let them have sauce on their, <laughs> didn't let them have butter on their toast and tomato ketchup. And you know, like, I know Gary Lewin, I heard that Gary Lewin used to give you guys a little bit of a Mars bar for a match to give you a bit of that little bit of that glucose to run. Is that true? Listen, I don't it never oh, gave me because I don't, I don't eat chocolate. I don't eat chocolate, but well, Gary was always well, good for that. T- yeah, yeah, so Gary Lennon was there doing it. Arsene was stuck to all that. But yeah. what Arsene did is that Arsene realised, you know, listen to Pat Rice, he said, look, don't touch that back four. Yeah. But what Arsene did is he inherited some leaders. Yeah. He, he leaders. And all, right, for instance, that he had the back four. And he, he, or back five because you yeah. had to, you had to back five because remember he had Keon was there and Bob Bold was still there. Yeah. Winners, you didn't need he didn't need to tell them what to do. Yeah, they they kind of told him what what was required. You had Tavis Seaman, the best goalie in, in in Europe. Yeah, you had Ian Wright still there. You had Dennis Burkamp was still there. Yeah, who, who was, at, was there at the club and you remember you had David Platt for his experience. Although yeah. Ray Parler, David Platt was coming. Ray, Ray Parler, Parler as well. yeah, all so, these guys, yeah. And it, so what, he, what Arsene did is that he brought in Patrick Vieira from um, um, AC Milan was in game. Remember, Remy Gard was his first signing. Yeah. Also, also, he brought Jules Grimondi as well. So what he did is that he kind of, he kind of brought a bit of velvet to the Iron Fist. Yes. But what he did is that he, he got into the people's head. He, he, he got um, Nigel Winterburn in the back four thinking, you know what? You guys can play to your, to your, to your 38 because I know you guys can defend. But what I want you to do is I want you, there's a lot of things you guys are capable of doing. Like he's got Tony, uh, he got Tony Adams thinking that he was, he was bloody, he was um, for Ketty, getting him to come up all the time. And he was yeah. doing it. Okay, I, know, I know Tony used to do it a lot as a job of Graham, that was only for set pieces. Yeah. But, you know, Tony, and then you had, he had Bold thinking he was, he was bloody, uh, he, he was Pierlo. Yeah. Well, you know, Play, you know well, that, that, that goal, that goal against Everton yeah. was uh, summed it up, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. And then, and then, so 
basically, and then he, Nigel Winterburn we used to love his sessions. He got Nigel to be thinking of extending his career a bit, and he's the same with um, Lee as well. Yeah. So in that respect, Arsene was fantastic with players. Plus he had Vieira, Vieira as well. So so even that first season, not his, in that ninety six ninety seven, I knew something was coming. 